Keep it coming, buddy. Remember, this was all because of you. The second you grabbed my freaking gimbal stick thing, you unleashed the freaking Batman. You unleashed the Batman. Here he is. He's in his freaking bathroom, in his freaking hotel, flapping his stupid little wings. Well, we gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> Yo, if you watch the Sevon podcast, you know exactly what this is going to be about. So, you ready? Ready for what? The main event. Dave Hip and Steel. It's going to be what, my third or fourth video on the guy at this point? We all saw that video, right? Yeah. If you follow Sevon, you know that I've kind of been trying to have an interaction with him. If you want to be the best, you got to take out the best. There are a couple of interactions that I've been wanting to have as I'm at the CrossFit Games where a lot of the people I make a lot of the videos on are floating around. The reason I want to have these interactions with these people is because face to face people might act a little bit differently. Maybe they can understand that I'm not trying to be a complete dickwad to them, but I'm trying to make a video for the purpose of bettering the sport of CrossFit. They'll get that possibly better than just hearing me yell at a computer screen. We can have a little bit of a conversation face to face. When it comes to the athletes that are competing, I'm trying to be extremely respectful of their space. If they want nothing to do with me and I can tell that when they're walking by I won't have anything to do with them and if I do happen to talk to them and I get any vibe of hey leave me the hell alone I don't want to be the guy that's going to have anything to do with their weekend so I just let them be and I believe that makes a whole lot of sense when it comes to Dave Hippensteel the same thing was going down so I'd be walking around I saw him in the beer garden a couple of times maybe you guys saw him on the live stream and he was with his family he was with friends he was chatting with people and I didn't want to be the dickwad to go ruin whatever was going on in that moment the other thing that I'm trying to do is exactly what I told you guys that I would be doing. And that is giving you stuff that maybe you've never seen in this space before. So I try to like nut the fuck up. Time to nut up or shut up. Put on my big boy pants and get out there and do it. So after the CEO board meeting that the Savon podcast and was led by Matt Souza right outside the affiliate set up at the venue, we were in the beer garden. I saw David Hippensteel. He was hanging out with some people and I didn't want to bother him again. Didn't want to do it on the live stream because again, I'm trying to be respectful. And after a little while, it gets really hot in there and I wasn't drinking. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go wander around and I'm going to get some footage of the venue. And as I'm walking out, I noticed that he's walking in by himself as he's by himself. I'm like, okay, if this that would be me and you. Get the hell out of here, man. I'm not fighting. I kind of think you are. This is probably the only opportunity I'm going to get. He's been with people all weekend, and I walk up to him. As I'm walking around, the camera's muted, right? So I always have it muted. When I walk up to Dave Hibbenstiel, I'm like, hey, I'm recording, but the thing's muted. They won't be able to hear a word that you say again because I'm trying to be respectful. And I shake his hand. I go, I'm Andrew Hiller. And he goes, I know who you are. And I'm like, oh, okay. You never answered any of my text messages. This entire time I'm having this conversation with this gimbal thing that I've got, all right? So this gimbal, it extends. This is what it looks like. I'm walking around. And the reason I have this is because I'm real media, right? As soon as I got that email, I went out and like, I gotta get something that's going to give me some better image if I want it. So this is like a $160 thing I got from the Apple store. And what happens is on the back of your phone, you put this little thing. And then from there, you can like magnetically clip it on there. And then once it's magnetically clipped on there, you turn it on and it kind of levels its way out. It's pretty neat, right? So it's level. And then when I'm trying to get a wide shot, I double click this thing and it turns. Turn turn there. So I'm walking around like this, right? There's no surprise that I'm walking around with a freaking camera. And when I walk up to Hip and Steel, I'm holding it in this hand. I go shake his hand with my right and this thing's just pointing right in his face. I'm like, hey, I'm recording, but it's muted. They won't be able to hear a word you say so we can talk. I knew the entire time this thing's in my hand right here, correct? So the first thing I say to him is, you didn't answer my text messages and you guys saw my text messages because I put it up in my second video. Let me remind you that I made a video on David Hip and Steel. The date was April 24th. On April 25th, Dave Hippensteel reaches out to me via Instagram as a result of me having made that video. In that, he gives me his phone number and he says, if you want to reach out to me, here is that phone number. So that morning, once I received that text message, I respond to him. He asked for me to remove my video because I don't know what it's like to be him. I did
did an entire video on that. If you want, I'll link it somewhere in the description. You can go watch that video. But essentially, in the text message I sent him is that what would it be like to be in the person who is in 31st place, who sees this video or knows that you're the competitor who's shorting the repetitions and I can't take the video down because then it makes me a hypocrite and it takes away from everything that I'm doing here. And I hope that you understand. I'm going to leave it up. If you want to say anything th further, I would like to discuss it. And I didn't hear anything. That was April 25th at 8.18 a.m. Tuesday, April 26th at 5.50, I say, would you like to respond? And I still don't get anything. No nothing, no phone calls, no nothing. April 27th, I make another video discussing what his Instagram message said and what my text messages said in response to him because he didn't respond to me. So what's going to happen is I'm going to make another video. The way that the entire event went down is I go, hey, Dave, you didn't answer my text. And he goes, why would I respond to your text messages? You broke my trust. I didn't want any of this to be for the world to see. And in about a minute, you're going to find out why I'm making a video on this because I didn't want anybody to see any of this. But because of the way that Dave reacted, I'm going to let the entire world know exactly what happened here. I'm taking the fucking gloves off because this was bullshit. And this is what all of you follow me for. This exact content right here. Now, I'm the guy on the other end of his screen. He sent me this giant long thing and I responded to him with my own giant long thing. And then I offered him an opportunity to respond again. And at that point, he also didn't respond. We've gone over that. What trust do you develop through him sending me a giant message and then me responding with a giant message? Nothing. It doesn't matter how it makes you feel. I am some random dude on the internet. And at that point, I hadn't even created a second video, but because he didn't respond, then I made another one. So I don't know what he was trying to tell me when he said, you broke my trust. His and my conversation develops into something along the lines of, all I'm doing is I'm trying to level out the entire playing field for everybody. And it appears as if you didn't understand that when you didn't respond, you don't agree. And at that point, he starts to get a little bit flustered. He has a smile on his face the entire time. I'll plug in the video right here so you can see it. But a couple of times I repeat myself, I go, can you disagree with anything that you saw in my video? And he goes, that's besides the point. And I know, I go, no, it's entirely the point. It's the only thing that needs to be discussed right here is that you probably saw my video, right? Is there anything that you disagree with? And he, then he says, it don't know what it's like to be me. And I go, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it's like to be you. What is it like to be anybody else who might see this video? I mean, you're 65. You're supposed to be the example for everybody. And then he grabs my stick. Hip and oh, steel. hip and steel. Oh, let's see. Let's see. God, he looks his age right now. <laughs> unmute. Be nice. Be nice. Can we Hiller, can't unmute anything. yourself. Hiller, unmute yourself. Hiller, unmute yourself. Someone unmute Hiller. Susa, go over and film this shit. What's wrong with you? Come on, guys. You are live on the Saban podcast. You are now live on the Saban podcast. You were not, but you, you were muted. I told you you were muted, but now you're unmuted. Uh, and now we're talking. And all right, you grabbed my you grabbed my equipment, man. That wasn't cool. I told you you were muted, and that I was recording, word for word. Have a good one, man. I didn't hear that. Go ahead. Well, I did say it. it's the first thing I said to you. I said, "What's up, man? I'm muted." But I was live on the. Okay, so are you, man? So are you. Oh, wow. Damn, I fucking hate that we missed that juicy shit. He just like reaches over. So I had it over here this entire time. And he's like, get the thing. He just grabs it, right? Now look what happens when you grab it. So if I level it out, it levels, right? When you grab it, it jerks it away. And now it's pointed over there. It's unlevel. Go over and film this shit. What's wrong with you? Come on, guys. You are alive on the Saban podcast. One of the most unfortunate things in my life is that you can't see him grab it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start recording. So I'm recording myself in this video. And you're going to see that happens when you grab it is it jerks the thing a little bit. And when I'm doing this, it's pretty level. It's no problem. It's just a level thing. And there's no moving around. There's no way for it to jump. But when you grab it, the entire thing shakes. And I guess that's going to be the only proof that he had that, that, had that he grabbed it. But you get the idea. It's a self-leveling stick. Like any which way it goes, this thing's going to keep it relatively still. And this whole time, mind you, I was muted on the Savant podcast. I walked up. I was trying to be respectful. But because he grabbed my shit, now I'm making an entire video on it. He disrespected the shit out of me. Now, I can understand why he was pissed off. But what Dave Hippensteel doesn't know is I've had at least a dozen Masters athletes right around his age group walk up to me and go, dude, I saw that Dave Hippensteel 
something. This guy's been doing this shit for years and getting away with it. Thank you so much for calling that stuff out. I bet there's also probably a dozen or so plus Masters athletes who hate my fucking guts for doing that, but they're not coming up to me. They're probably go telling him the same thing. It's like, that Andrew Hiller guy's a piece of shit. How dare he? He doesn't know what it's like to be us. Every single one of you in that headspace is the exact fucking problem. I don't want to be the best. Uh <laughs> because there's a whole half or more, maybe way more, 75, 80, 90% of them are sitting there looking at you guys thinking you guys are fucking everything up because you guys are living in your own head saying that everything's so bad. And then I'm Andrew Hiller walking around the venue and I probably had 500 people walking to me saying that I'm what's needed in the sport for this exact sort of shit. So none of this, Dave, would have happened if you hadn't had grabbed my stick. Like what the fuck is, what were you thinking? Why would you do that? I understand you're pissed, but you've had three months, you're 65 years old, you're a grown man and you're trying to fuck and grab a 30 year old dude youtuber who's trying to better this for a crossfit so recording equipment in his first time around to the crossfit games are you kidding me i'm gonna put this thing down now i don't have to do anything else with this thing and no it's not broken and it's besides the point if it were taylor taylor didn't like that that guy touched my arm the other day i can only imagine what would have happened if taylor had his equipment grabbed by somebody in the middle of him recording something he would have freaked the fuck out and you know what i did i just go okay dave now you're live on the savant podcast i unmuted it and he goes what the fuck i thought you said it wasn't recording I go, no, I said you were muted the entire time. I walked up, I go, hey, you're muted. I'm Andrew Hiller. I'm recording and you're muted. And the entire time you can see they're just smiling and you can see the camera jump around. You can also see that I back off as soon as he grabs my stuff. And I'm like, okay, now you're live on the Savant podcast. And in the background, Savant's going, Hiller, unmuted. Hiller, unmuted. And I wasn't going to do it and I wasn't going to do it. And then he grabbed my shit and now you unleashed the fucking gates of hell, Dave Hippensteel. I would say two out of every three people that I've ever made a video on reach out and they go, I understand why you would do that. I won't do it anymore. I'm going to do better. And in the best instances, they redo whatever it is that they were doing and they do it even better. Now you take a three-time CrossFit Games athlete, a 65-year-old, and he's going to still live in the, you don't know what it's like to be me. And while he's correct, I'm only 30 and he's 65. I don't know what it's like to be him. What I do know is that there have been at least 50 other Masters athletes who have talked to me and said that they are beyond grateful that I called out him in particular. Not at the CrossFit Games, but over the course of this entire thing. Thing. It's like, oh, thank God you called out Dave Hippensteel. We don't want to be treated any, any easier than anybody else. We want it to be more harsh. So again, if I want to give you a quick 30-second synopsis of the whole thing, I've been trying to see Dave Hippensteel. I've been trying to respect Dave Hippensteel and all the athletes, and I tried to do so by walking up and, you know, you're muted. We can have a personal conversation while I'm still doing what I came here to do, which was show everybody the venue, and I wanted to talk to people like you in person. And he started to get a little bit ornery, and while I'm trying, I play really well off of people's emotions. So if they're being nice, then I'll be nice right back at him but if he's gonna get a little bit pissy then i'm gonna get a little bit pissy and i'm gonna push back a little bit and he, if i can sense that he's getting a little agitated then i'm gonna say well can you disagree what did you disagree with i mean i'm not just gonna let him go and like fall into a corner i want to push back a little bit and when i started pushing back that's when he grabbed my shit and when he grabbed my shit he pissed me the fuck off and i turned the camera on i knew the second that i turned the camera on he would call down again because people like him he want to he wants to look good to freaking everybody he wants to walk around he wants to be the hero he wants to be the 65 year old who beat every single thing in the world and be the cool shiny beacon and he doesn't want to hold himself accountable. He wants everything without putting the work in. And I fucking hate that. I hate people like that. I know a lot of people also do and I know there's going to be maybe 10 people in the world who are like, I can't believe he's making another video on Hip and Steel. Like that one Masters athlete. It's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And you know what I'm going to do when they sit there? I'm going to sit there I'm going to go, I don't care what you think. It doesn't matter! How it makes you feel! Because I know you're wrong, and if at the very least, maybe I'm not wrong. At least I've got a dick load of people on my side. And if we're choosing sides, I like the side that I'm on. The last word that came out of Dave Hippensteel's mouth as he walked away from me, right there, as soon as I went live, was like, you're a really interesting dude. But I was live on the... Okay, so are you, man. So are you. But he didn't say it like that. He said it in a more demeaning way. You're an interesting guy. And you're like, what, are you trying to hurt my feelings? You're trying to big dick me? 65-year-old three-time CrossFit Games athlete. How about the other three to four CrossFit Games athletes who walk up to me and they say, you're doing a great job. Thank you for everything you're doing. It's going to be really hard to take an insult from a guy who does videos like that with what I heard was his daughter judging him in a closed-down gym by himself in the dark, moving his shoes around, not looking at the workout. I don't give a fuck about your opinion about me, Dave Hippensteel. So you can wander around the, the freaking beer garden and you can get everyone to shake your hand and you can have your good old time. I don't want to fight anyone. You don't want to fight? Then what the hell are you doing here?
and you can avoid the fuck out of me and you're probably gonna watch this video and maybe you come up with me and have a little bit more brash interaction. Maybe you hit me in the face. Maybe you give me even more stuff to make a video about. Keep it coming, buddy. Remember, this was all because of you. The second you grabbed my freaking gimbal stick thing, you unleashed the freaking Batman. You unleashed the Batman. Here he is. He's in his freaking bathroom in his freaking hotel flapping his stupid little wings. Whatever. There's the whole story. Andrew Hiller out. <laughs>